Hey everyone, welcome to the Love America Hate Taxes podcast, and this is my sidekick, uh, Ryan Cook. I'm Don Rasmussen, managing partner here. We're going to talk about something that's extremely time sensitive. We are down to 60 days, Ryan, and we had this conversation months ago, uh, but as we know, everybody's been kind of waiting to see what happens because of a bunch of lawsuits and such, and so what I'm talking about is the FinCEN requirement, the Corporate Transparency Act. Mm -hmm. And so we talked about it is mandated um, by FinCEN, the Financial uh, Crimes Enforcement Network, to make sure that you are documenting who is the owner, who's a beneficial owner uh, of your entity. So that's awesome. kind of where we're going to start off at. Then we're going to have thir uh, what, about 10, 10 12 questions, questions or so. Yeah. yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, so we'll kind of jump into these. So again, um, the whole FinCEN thing, is interesting, right? There's a lot of mixed reviews on that, whether they're you know, you know, coming in on our privacy or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Um, I think we said on an earlier podcast that you know a lot of um, uh, modern countries already have this in yes. place, and so we're kind of behind the game as far as I'm not making a statement here. I'm just saying a lot of places sure. already do. Well, the justification is that yeah. you know money laundering, illegal activities, which all that's legitimate. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, kind of like we do on the, our other podcasts, there's people out there that abuse the system. And then everybody else has to suffer and, yeah. and face the consequences. The bad guys are going to do what the bad guys are going to do. That's a fact. You know? I think that's one of our questions. Yeah, to come exactly. Up, so. <laughs> so we'll kind of jump into this a little bit. So I know that the, uh, you're going to file it now on a uh, federal database called BOSS. It's yes. the new the uh, Beneficial Ownership Secure System is the uh, acronym, or BOSS is the acronym for it. Um, but starting with our first question here, is um, the question is, is I own a single rental property in an LLC. Do I have to file the BOI report with BOSS? Yes, you do. If you own an LLC, the answer is going to be yes. yes. So whether you have one property in there or not, you know, mm -hmm. or, or multiple properties, it's all about the LLCs. So. Gotcha. Even if it's a dormant LLC? Correct. It, well, if you want to keep it active, you're mm -hmm. going to have to, okay. even if you keep it dormant, you're, you're going to have to make sure you report that. Gotcha. All right. Number two, I own 11 rental properties, each inside its own LLC. Do I have to file 11 separate BOI reports? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You definitely have to do that. Just keep in mind, again, if you have set up an LLC, whether you did it through Zoom, or what's it called? Legal Zoom. Legal Zoom. Or yeah. if you go to an attorney or whatever the case is, you have until the end of this year, 2024, to get this uh, submitted. So Yeah, I uh, follow a lot of financial pages on social media, and there was a time where every thing that they ever suggested was throw it in an LLC, throw it in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, do this and do this. I'm thinking, how many of these? Reports of these people are going to have to do that. Followed some of those social media gurus' advice, you know, for well, yeah. that. So well, I think this is a good time to talk about what if you don't? Yeah. What What are the penalties? Yeah. So you know, if you look at it, it's five hundred dollars a day um, for the the violation. It. Uh, let's see here. I want to get all the specific. There's actually some penalties too. Give me one second here. Yeah, it's for uh, knowingly. Avoiding that, I think it's five hundred dollars a day. No, five hundred dollars a day is if you don't do it. If you don't do it, yeah. And then there's, I'm sorry, it's a ten thousand dollar potential criminal. Yeah, fine. So you just add five hundred dollars a day. I mean, so if you, oh, I forgot to do that, and you're thirty days into it. Oh my know, gosh, that's a lot of money, buddy. That's a lot of money. Fifteen grand. I wonder if is there forgiveness for that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh it's goodness. gonna be interesting how yeah. it proves out in the courts in the future. But yeah, it definitely will be five hundred dollars per day. Yep. So number three. My CPA says that he thinks filing the BOI report for me is an unauthorized practice of law. What do you think? Well, there's been a lot of debate about this. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that um, a lot of CPAs are saying, no, they're not going to do it for mm -hmm. that reason. Now, what they've done is they've contracted with groups that um, have the legal guidance inside. Like, for example, we have a relationship like that. That way, we're not crossing that fine line. Because what's going to happen is if it's filed... Uh, I believe, and, and no offense to my attorney clients and friends out there, but the reality is the expectation is that the, um, the ABA, uh, American Bar Association, is there's going to be attorneys out there that are going to go after mm. those who did this that were not attorneys. So Interesting. Uh, just keep that in mind. Yeah, that's why we use an outside firm to, to handle our clients. Wow, so. awesome. Um, okay, so we kind of talked about this, but number four, how many people could be subject to the $500 a day penalty? Um, like 
let me ask, like, is this, like, so if you have multiple partners inside your LLC, is it just per entity that it's $500 a day, or is it the individuals? You have to list mm -hmm. all, all the different, anyone has a beneficial ownership in there. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have multiple partners, if you have 10 partners, it's got to be make sure it's listed in there. So, you know, wh whoever is going to handle the filing, that should be taken care of when you do that to make sure everybody's listed. So. Okay. Because, again, it's a $500 a day fine. And that would be a so let's 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 look at this way here. Let's say nobody does it January first, mm -hmm. January thirtieth, February, so on and so forth. Um, they realize, oops, we forgot to do it, or I thought you were going to do it. Mm -hmm. No, I thought you were going to do it. So let's say there's five partners. Mm. Well, that's five times five hundred dollars a day. That's twenty five hundred dollars a day. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, it could be really ugly really quick. Yeah. So wow. So. Take care of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't delay. Don't yeah. procrastinate. Yeah. Number five, does a self-employed individual or partner in a partnership have to file? Yeah. It all comes down to if you have an LLC in place. That's really what it boils down to. If you're self-employed, um, you know, you don't have an LLC, you're just doing a Schedule C, sole proprietor, the answer is no. Okay. And uh, what if my business does not have a physical address? Okay, that's one of the, the, the criteria. You have to list a physical address. And mm -hmm. No P.O. boxes, you know, not a, um, a UPS store type situation mm -hmm. there. You got to have a physical address. So, and the, part of the reason why is that, you know, if they found that uh, an entity was doing things they weren't supposed to be doing, you know, from a legality standpoint, they want to know where to go find you. That's pretty oh, much yeah. what it comes yeah. down to. Gotcha. So, and they won't find you at the UPS store. No, they won't do that. Or the mail, out, mail uh, box. Um, next question is, is the registered agent responsible for filing the BOI report? No. Um, they may offer to do so. I know some different services that are more um, formal, the corporate type of registered agents uh, offer to do that service, but no, they're not required. It's all about the ownership. Okay. Number nine, I own a reporting company, but I do not have a social security number. Will my individual taxpayer identification number suffice? Uh, well, you can use a, um, a passport, a mm -hmm. driver's license, um, any type of identification number that would identify you. So if for some reason you don't, then, you know, um, you can use one of, one of those, those alternatives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right, next one. Do I have to name, do I have to name in the BOI the attorney who helped me create my new corporation? Yeah, so the company applicant, so on the application, you have to list who's the one who's completing this here. Mm -hmm. So if your attorney's doing it, absolutely, that goes on there. Okay. Next question. If a person listed on the BOI report is later dismissed from the company, does this trigger an entirely new BOI report? Yes. Yeah. So the one thing is you have to keep it updated. Mm -hmm. That's a requirement. So just keep in mind that, you know, a, a lot of people – change addresses or they, you know, have a change in ownership or whatever mm -hmm. the case is, just make sure that you put that in, in your notes that each year you go back and evaluate it. As soon as somebody uh, transitions out, make sure, or if you change address, make sure that's changed. I don't know how much they're going to enforce that, but that is a requirement. So, yep. And here's kind of one, here's our last question, but kind of one that we uh, talked about a little bit earlier, but if I were a criminal, <laughs> why would I file the BOI report? Well, criminals are going to be criminals, and they're not going to do that, and so they're not really concerned about the ramifications of that anymore. They're uh, concerned about the ramifications of the law, mm -hmm. you know. So we don't expect uh, if you are, you know, money laundering or you know drugs or some other kind of um, nefarious activities mm -hmm. that you're going to go in there and do that. That's that's just a reality. But that's what the IRS or probably the um, FinCEN is looking for because they're looking for those who intentionally don't do it so they mm -hmm. can find them and potentially lock them up. So. Gotcha. So um, in a nutshell, you better get this done. Yep. Um, otherwise, y your penalties could be very uh, significant. And uh, any, uh, just personal opinion here, Any? Uh, do you think this thing will hold up long term or do you think we're going to see some, just yeah. personal opinion here? Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, there's been quite a few lawsuits that have been filed against mm -hmm. this. Of course, the National Small Business Association uh, was successful on getting a um, – a court, I believe it was in Alabama, who put a stay on it. If you're part of that organization, then you get the, until they get this rectified through the courts, you do get the ability to participate. Actually, we're members of the NSBA, so that's why I know that. Um, 
But if you're outside of that, I think it was like 35,000 are members. So if you're outside of that, then of course you don't have that protection. Like I said, there's some other states who've been filing lawsuits against us, consider it's not constitutional. You know, listen, we got 60 days left in this year. Um, the reality is, you know, I mean, unless it's a last minute, but I wouldn't wait that long. Um, you know, certainly I think that week, that last week of December is going to be a busy time. Uh, people getting on their computers and doing it themselves or hiring somebody or whatever it may be. So, gotcha. Especially with, with it being an election year, I doubt it's going to move that quick, too. Yeah, but, you know, true. as far as that goes. True, true. Well, guys, thank you so much again for joining us for today's podcast. We hope you loved it. Um, again, if you found value in it, just click that like button, click the share button, share it on your social media with friends. Um, and if you're interested, we do have some Love America Hate Taxes t-shirts. And if you can just drop your email, we'll be able to send those off to you. So Absolutely. until our next one, thank you so much. Yeah.